Early adolescence is a time of tremendous change and challenge. From the ages of 12 to 15, students face emotional, physical, social, and intellectual changes. They are growing faster than at any other time of life other than infancy. They are learning to make the transition from childhood to adulthood. What happens during these years can shape a lifetime. Educational research supports the need for middle schools that address the unique needs of the early adolescent. Montessori middle schools have been adapting the Montessori philosophy to the needs of early adolescents for over 25 years. In this program, we will be visiting two of the oldest and most respected Montessori middle schools in the country, School of the Woods, a private Montessori school in Houston, Texas, and Clark Montessori Junior High School, a public school in Cincinnati, Ohio. Central to the Montessori Middle School philosophy are multi-age learning communities, grace and courtesy, hands-on theme-based learning, individual and group work, self-construction, environmental education, service learning, and economic independence. Maria Montessori believed that children have a natural desire to learn and that they thrive in an environment that facilitates that learning. The Montessori Middle School, like all Montessori schools, is a multi-aged learning community. The older children serve as role models for the younger students, helping everyone to understand the expectations of the classroom. I like to acknowledge my partner, Jamera, because I wasn't here yesterday for community meeting, and she came up to me at the beginning of the day and uh, like took the initiative to get the, our papers on. The multi-age classroom is more like a family than a peer group, enabling students to form bonds with classmates of all ages. I was incredibly nervous just because I didn't know anybody. Like There was no one from my old class at my elementary school. Um, but the eighth graders, they made it easy. They kind of like, my first friend, I think, was actually an eighth grader named Emily. And she was just real nice. She was in my group and she just didn't look down on me like I was a, like, you know, you're a little seventh grader. But she was just really nice and we became really good friends and we still are. Each day at the School of the Woods begins with a morning meeting. Part of the meeting is set aside for acknowledgments. I would like to acknowledge all the teachers for making a great cycle one. Okay. I'd like to acknowledge my small group for yesterday. We did really awesome. Acknowledgements help to establish an atmosphere of trust where students feel safe to be themselves. They quickly learn that those who acknowledge their classmates are often recognized themselves for their contributions to the school community. I move that we can use the stove slash oven. Today, there is also a suggestion to change the procedure on access to the classroom's oven. A proposal is made and discussed. The students themselves handle the entire democratic process. Once all the pros and cons have been laid out, the students who made the proposal convene to restate it to meet the consensus of the group. More than one person can use it at a time. And it also means that um, if eight people need to boil water, you can get a pot and boil water and all those people can share the water. The proposal passes by a wide margin. Case closed. Using this democratic process helps middle school students understand how the larger society functions in a meaningful way. They learn to discuss issues respectfully and resolve them constructively. Montessori philosophy emphasizes that all members of the classroom community treat others with kindness and respect. At Clark, all seventh graders attend a fall leadership camp to help students learn to take responsibility and work together to achieve a common goal. In this meeting, the students are acknowledging their classmates who took leadership in a project that challenged them to work together. Our fourth or fifth um, clue 
And um, so then, we was at the one we had to burn through the little string. And after we got through that, everybody was just sitting there arguing. Colleen was like, you know what? Come on. And everybody followed Colleen instead of just standing there and getting the penalty. Colleen, everybody ran up to Colleen. And then that's once we started, um, that's when we started cooperating and everything. You heard that Justin and I were talking about you behind the back. I think that that was really... Learning leadership skills help to build the school community. When conflicts arise, there are ways for students to resolve conflict without adult intervention. At Clark, a conflict resolution wheel is used to sort out issues and feelings. I want you guys to apologize to me and not talk about me no more. And when I'm the goal is to restore the sense of community within a classroom. I want us to be friends again, to have a strong community. And to do this, when I hear people talking about other people, I'm going to step in and be a leader. Diffusion. Diffusion, okay. And... Academic content is taught through theme-based research projects and small group work. Like all Montessori schools, an emphasis is on hands-on learning. The cell membrane is the wall around the cell. It's permeable, just like a real factory in which there's a cargo bay and doors for workers to come through. Vacuole. The vacuole is like a storage unit. It stores things that are not being used in the factory. Understanding cell structure is part of the middle school science curriculum. Students were challenged to come up with a metaphor that explains how the cell parts function. These students use the example of a factory to explain the function of each cell part. Using a metaphor as a theme for this hands-on project helps students retain knowledge. When you did your experiment, what variable affected the experiment the most? The length of the string. And what happened with that? The shorter the string was, the more frequency it had, and then the longer ones had less frequency. At Clark, the theme of motion provided the focus for the third cycle of the school year, including the physics of motion, motion on an atomic level in chemistry, and the movement of ideas as seen through the study of art. For the art curriculum, students went to the Cincinnati Art Museum to conduct research on Renaissance art, which they later used to compose scripts for podcasts. The podcasts covered the particular aspects of the art they were studying. Later, the students returned to the museum to follow their classmates' podcast tours, broadening their knowledge of the museum's collection of artifacts and studying the movement of the idea of beauty, art, and subject over time. The third cycle culminated with a visit from professional trapeze artists who gave the students hands-on experience of the physics of motion. Theme-based learning provides a structure around which to organize knowledge, increase retention, and to see relationships through subjects.